Welcome back, Akron fans, to another exhibition match. Sorry, not exhibition. Damn it. Again. Welcome back, Akron fans, to 2013 Akron Christmas Tournament cast. This is round two, and we have just finished God vs. Haiku, where God demonstrated why he is generally considered the, the best or one of the best players in this game by beating Haiku on the well, last game was on Overgrown Citadel using a powerful Lodgepod Rush to counter Haiku, well, not sure what Haiku was actually planning on doing, probably getting quick Mar tanks. Anyway, on to the next series which is Monkuki versus Electro. Whoever wins fights God, whoever loses will fight Sharadun. And we're starting on Rooftop Showdown once again. And Electro will be starting out in the east side of the map. Monkuki will be on the west side of the map. Monkuki will be playing Vekir most likely. And yes, he is. And Electro, I'm actually not sure what he's going to be playing. He's playing CISO. So CISO versus Vekir. This is, unlike what I said about CISO versus Grekim, not as long standing of a matchup, or at least not a matchup with so many long standing complaints. CISO is definitely a powerful. I mean, it's powerful against Vekir, but the thing is Vekir and CSO are... Well, okay, Vekir wasn't really played as much much earlier on. It's only been played a lot recently in the last few months. Whereas CSO versus Grekham, like I said, was always the matchup. Everyone played it all the time. That was the balanced thing. Vekir, not so much, and it actually isn't too bad regardless. Vekir still actually fares pretty well. They have a bit of an idiosyncratic style when it comes to how they use their vehicles and have to heal up with the depot, but overall, it's actually not too bad. When you consider that they weren't really so hammered on in terms of balance like Grekim and Ciso were. At least by the players. Can't speak for the devs, though. Regardless, onto the game itself. Monkuki, actually, I'm just to say Monkuki is going for, both players going for, actually no, Monkuki is going for quick economy. Electro going for a quick attack with his infantry, at least not just a scouting run. Normally you don't scout like this. Normally this is a big attack. If you're just scouting, you send your Marine and Special Op. You just keep one of the Marines at home and use that to build up, well, your infrastructure, really. You build up economy. However, Rooftop Showdown is a fairly proxy-focused and rush-focused map, and it looks like both... Well, okay, Mongookie, this is pretty typical. Going for Shinbu, Tethbeer, Scout, that is normal. Electro doing what he's doing is not normal at all. I don't see Mongookie responding to it quite yet, but then he doesn't really have the resources to do so. His response would either be to build infantry or to build up a depot. And... Since he's continuing to go for RPs, I'm assuming he's confident he can deal with this without having to worry about it too much. And it looks like Electro... He is... I don't know if he's committed to this rush. It's hard to tell. This thing with Akron the first three minutes, it's really hard to tell what, you're, what the players are doing in their early game. They're definitely trying to mind game each other, trying to make sure that their opponent can't tell what they're trying to do. That's a big part of it. So, Electro looks like he is still pretty committed to that attack. We'll see if he changes anything over here. He's right at the edge of the unplayable past. He appears to be changing something. Ah, building an Im a second importer first. So he's probably going for a proxy armor. He just wants to make sure he has more reserves at home. So it's easier for him to defend, or at least harder for Monkey to attack it. No defense, really, but definitely harder for him to attack it. Anyway, quick foundation coming for Monkey at the 136 mark and no QPRP. So I expect this is probably just for healing. No, he's going for a straight depot. He's He's got to build some QPRPs then. Either build or teleport over to the crates. Because you cannot get vehicles without Q Plasma. But, like I said, that's definitely a response you could go for is early vehicles and then use that to get rid of the infantry. And possibly skip teleport them in at the base to just finish off the rest of it. Though, admittedly, if Electro uses, loses the infantry that he has built up and he has sent out, I would imagine that he's probably not going to be too keen on continuing this game. Anyway, Electro is, there we go, there's the proxy, Armory right at the center of the map, and another Importer as well. This is pretty, it's pretty committed, I'd say. Electro is definitely going for this proxy, Monkuki is definitely going for the Counter Depot. He hasn't built up any supporting infrastructure, like I said. The RPs really should be on that cube plasma now, if he wants to get a Zion Pulsar as soon as the Depot is up. He does, he has apparently lost any hope of actually dealing with this proxy directly. 
I'm a bit surprised he hasn't gone south and tried just to avoid that entirely and then go to the main base and see what he can deal with there. That's... That is surprising. Normally, oftentimes when I see players fighting proxies, they will just go around the proxy. And in Rooftop Showdown, that's actually fairly easy. It's a big split in the center of the map right here. So you can easily go south of that proxy and attack the importers directly, attack the main base directly, while Electro is out, while all those defense forces are forward and overextended. I mean, Monkuki is definitely aware of this proxy, and Electro is actually no longer going for it. In fact, he is switching up entirely. He's going for a straight attack into Monkuki's base as the depot is built up, and there we go. There's that Q Plasma Resource Processor, and another one going on there that combined should be enough by the time the depot is up for a Zion Pulsar to be built. Now, at this point, the infantry will kill off the Shin and Teth Veer, but a Zion Pulsar should be up shortly, actually, after that. Which will basically get rid of them, and since Electro has no production structures whatsoever, that is... Or at least had. There we go. There's the armory, so he has a bit of backup. He has five reserves, he has an armory, he could easily build... He easily triple the amount of forces he has right here. And that's what he's probably going to do before he attacks. And Monkuki, on the other hand, getting up another foundation for healing. He has the resources. Q Plasma for a Zion Pulsar. He is not yet building up a Zion Pulsar yet. He doesn't have the Liquid Crystal for that. But he could very well do so, and it looks like he's likely to be doing so right now. There we go. There's the Zion Pulsar. There's the armory. There's a factory. Interesting choice. That might be a little bit... That might be pushing it. He is definitely getting more infantry in there. Probably going to get Lancer in the factory. That would seem like the most sensible option against Zion Pulsars, which are the most likely thing to come up. Though Teth Pulsars are a possibility. They aren't likely, but they are a possibility. It's pretty easy for him to for Monku to just drop in a Teth Veer into the depot and turn into a Teth Pulsar, especially given he has the money for it and is not actually doing it. But he has the money if he wanted to. So Electro, he has not yet... Okay, his factory's not yet built up, so we'll see what it's up to when he's done with it. Unless at Monku's point of view it is built up, but I don't believe it is... And Monkuki is actually... Well, Monkuki is in a great position to deal with this. He is getting a second Zion Pulsar just to amplify the damage put in there. I still think getting this Teth Fear into a Teth Pulsar would be a good idea just to preempt the Lancer, which is coming. There is that Lancer I was talking about. Electro is definitely going for that. He knows what he's doing when it comes to dealing with Zion Pulsars. However, the Zion Pulsars, of course, are wonderful for dealing with infantry. And some of the infantry are actually able to get through. These infantry are kind of scary against Zion Pulsars. If you aren't careful with them, they can tear apart the Zion Pulsar. The Zion Pulsar actually won't have much of a chance, and that's something to bear in mind. It's really important because Zion Pulsars are tricky to deal with. And come to think of it, I was actually a bit foolish when I said Teth Pulsar because, as you can see, the Teth Mirror itself is a very powerful anterior, and it looks like Monkuki has pretty much taken this. Electro is a bit further in the future. Having dealt damage to the Lancer, it looks like he might have pulled it back, but it doesn't matter. From Monkuki's point of view, which is further in the past and thus more true, that Lancer's dead. That armory's up, but the Zion Pulsar here, skipping back into Electro's base to get rid of the importers, and that is basically game. This Lancer is unable to do really anything here. And that Zion Pulsar not even t ultimately taking any damage. Skipping through, and that's game. So... Game 2 will be starting shortly, I'm sure. But, once again, a lot of proxy... Like, Rooftop Showdown is a very proxy and rush-oriented map. It's kind of wide, but it's got a decent amount of open space. A lot of choke points, mind you, but it, it still happens to work out that players really can just rush each other out. Not a whole lot of elevation changes, so despite the open space, there are a lot of entrances, there are a lot of openings... And ultimately, there's a lot of places, nooks and crannies, just to hide buildings. Which means a lot of proxies. And Electro throws in the towel! So that is Game 1. And I'll Game 2 for you guys shortly, so stay tuned. Welcome back, Acron fans, to Game 2 of Round 2, the second match. Monkuki versus Electro. The first match we saw Monkuki and Electro duke it out on Rooftop Showdown, and Electro lost, tried a proxy, didn't quite work out, and the Zion Pulsars got him. Now, Game 2 is going to be on Snowblind, which is another fairly small map, but it is a bit more blocked out. There's less room for proxies, there's 
only one entrance really, so it's a bit easier to defend and a bit easier to scout out proxies. So I would imagine that there may be a bit of a rush game, but I, I'd be a bit more surprised if there was a proxy game. So let us begin! Electro starting out in the southwest corner of the map, Monkuki in the northeast, Monkuki of course will be going for Vekir, and Electro likely to be going for CISO. And like I said, this map is still kind of small. It's not that small of a map. I mean, it's, it is definitely a... Actually, it's, it is pretty small. I'm not sure the exact dimensions offhand. It's smaller than Rooftop Showdown, but as you can see, it does have more terrain blocks. It does have more elevation. There's a, a lot less room to be building buildings on. You can pretty much only build buildings either up here or basically within your opponent's frozen lake. It's a lot easier to scout that sort of thing out. I expect that... Oh, Electro's actually going for Grekum. I stand corrected. I expect Electro will possibly... If he's going for Grekum, he could actually do a proxy. He could set up a triad around here, or possibly even here, and try to go for proxy Octobots. However, given that he lost the last game, I doubt he's going to do that. He's probably going to play it safe. He's probably just going to try to build up more economically. Against Vekir, probably going to be going for an early Octobot, depending on any Zion Pulsar shenanigans that might be coming in. Followed by... Probably just quick zoom to gate tech. And trying to attack from the unplayable pass from there. Though he may instead go for more Octo and then Octoligo heavy strategy, which is... Octoligo is actually very difficult for Vekir to deal with. I've had the displeasure of doing so. If you have enough units as Vekir already before the Octoligos come, it's not that big of a deal. But Vekir, like I said before, they depend heavily on keeping their units alive. They depend on their depot healing. And you have to be in top form on that in order to deal with Octoligos and have enough units by the time Octoligos come up. So, no real indication what, what Electro is up to. Monkuki, on the other hand, going a bit more for economy. He is scouting out, but in no way that's abnormal. Shinveer, Tethveer, that's perfectly normal. Now, the Shinveer actually is being... No, it's being perfectly normal. I thought it might be going off for the corner, building a proxy foundation. In fact, that is a powerful proxy in this case, because he could build a proxy foundation and set up a massive foundation web, allowing the vehicles that come in later to just, well, okay, set up the web at the same time as the vehicles come in so they just don't die. But it looks like that's not what's happening. Instead, he is simply scouting out. There's no indication that he is committing to anything here. Electro is going for economy as well, trying to get some defense up, but really no commitment from either one. Electro, curiously, is not going for that quick QP. He does have it. He will have Octopods shortly. But he was a little bit slow in getting it. Well, Monkuki, on the other hand, is not going for Quick Q Plasma. He is definitely going for Faster Liquid Crystal. Clearly not too worried about rushes. Although, on the other hand, the last game he did this exact same build at the start and was able to quickly transition into Depot. Able to jump back a minute and a half or so, move one of the RPs, or two of the RPs over to QP, and then get a Depot up and a bunch of Zion Pulsers. So, he could switch over if he had to. There's nothing stopping that. And an Octopod is up. That's exactly what I was expecting. I don't expect Electro to attack with this. I expect him to patrol around the base. He may go for an attack. I doubt it. That being said, if he did go for an attack, it would be very powerful. <laughs> it actually probably might win him the game if he did that. I'm not sure if an, Octo on its, an Octopod on its own wouldn't, but an Octo and Octopod pair at this point on a map this size actually might give him a bit of a fighting chance. Octopods do beat Zion Pulsers. In a straight-up fight, Octopods will beat Zion Pulsers, and supported by Octos, that could actually do a lot of damage. Right now, the depot has been built, and while Zion Pulsers not... And we just jumped back a minute or so on the switch, but where Electro was looking, the depot was built. The Zion Veer had not been turned to a Zion Pulsar, but another one could have been made. And Monkuki does have his RPs on QP. They will be getting enough Q Plasma in time. But yeah, if this Octopi were to rush in with a couple Octos, Electro could very easily take this game at this point. I'm a little bit surprised he's not doing so. I'm not entirely surprised since it is a bit of a scary thing to try to do, especially being a, he is one game behind. But he has another Octopod coming up, and more Octos as well. It looks like this is not just a patrol force. We'll see shortly, but I doubt it is just for patrol. I'm sure it is going to be going for an attack. Mogugi, a minute and a half down from where Electro is, building up his depot, and Electro just jumped back 30 seconds, or, no, no, he's on Electro's, sorry, Electro and Mogugi are at the same time. Two minute mark. Electro might be changing around his plans a bit. Monkuki, on the other hand, he's probably suspecting... He is clearly suspecting a rush. He wouldn't be going for a depot this early if he wasn't. He is getting it... Okay, this is a Zion Veer that will become a Zion Pulsar. And once that happens, that Octopod still has a fighting chance. Especially two Octopods. Two Octopods will have no problem whatsoever. 
And if that Octo is there, that might just distract that Zion Pulsar as well and cause it to splash itself to death. So at this point, Electro really has an advantage. And it looks like he is a... Is he aware of this? He was moving forward, but he stopped. Unfortunately for him, he has stopped halfway and looks like Monkuki managed to save that Shinbir as well. Actually, Shinbir and Tethvir moving them back and keeping them away from danger in case an Octopod comes in. Now, a couple Octopods and an Octo would still be able to beat this. But it might be a bit closer, and the Zion Pulse looks like it might be coming in for an attack. Like I said, I'm not surprised that Electro is not rushing. I'm really not surprised. I do not blame him one bit. It's just worth pointing out in terms of timings. And it looks like he's going for a bit of an attack. He is just prodding a bit. I'm just pointing out in terms of timings that... Basically, right now is a good time to attack. He'll need to support it with the Octo and Octopod here. That's He will have to do that. But now is not a bad time to attack. Especially given that the Zion Pulsar is getting skipped teleport. That's actually pretty huge. And Monkuki doesn't have the resources to get any other... Like, well, can get another Zion Pulsar. But with the other Octopod coming in, that would help. And it looks like that first Zion Pulsar will be going down... Well, it... Would be going down, but Electro has retreated that Octopod. He lost the timing. He could still have a chance right now, but it's kind of tricky. He might want to just stay on defense. The important thing about that timing is that the skip teleport is not going to be relevant. And Monkuki right now, he is going to have a really hard time dealing with this. He's probably just going to retreat back to base and avoid this entirely. But I expect that he's probably just going to try to be clever and find a just a safe spot around here that the Octopods can't see, that they can't get him from. But no, actually, he hasn't. He did, in fact, lose one of his Zion Pulsars. Electro has managed to take out one of the Zion Pulsars successfully. Oh, Monkuki points out in the chat that the Depot Heal is actually the deciding factor in the fight. And used wisely, it would turn it around and cause the Octo and Octopod to lose. And while I agree with that, Electro was attacking near the Unplayable Past Edge, which means that that Depot Heal isn't going to work out. He was right at the Unplayable Past Edge when the Octo and Octopods were coming, or would have been coming in. So... Depot heal doesn't work unless you actually tell your vehicles to go into the depot. Meaning, it might help as it progresses forward. I and mean, there's the time wave is still carrying it forward. There's still a bit of a chance. But timed right in terms of meta time, depot heal is not going to save anything. Anyway, Monkuki, from his point of view, as a... Actually, no production. He has an extra Zion Beer coming in because it looks like he had to use his resource producing Zion Beer to get up and... That gives Electro a bit of an opportunity. He does have a Reef. He doesn't have a lot of economy, though. He's focusing very heavily on Octopods, and at this point, three Octopods, he needs to attack now. Actually, this might be a little bit too late, even. But it's close. He, he does need to attack fairly soon if he's going to attack. He is definitely going for a rush-heavy strategy. He is not going for economy. This has been made clear from the very start of this game. He is not going for economy. He is clearly going for tech, though. He's actually about to get advanced structures and then get a Spire. He doesn't have the Cube Plasma to support that, though. You get air units and so forth. And Monkuki, not sure if Electro had gone for some sneaky expansions while he was given that free time. And no, he is not. Electro has not expanded much at all. Like I said, Electro, he's clearly very focused on defense when what he's going for is an offensive strategy. Now, at this point, like I said, if he jumps back to the Implevel Past Edge right now and attacks right now, if he attacks at this very moment, which he doesn't, I honestly don't know why he's not attacking right now. I am harping on this. I, I realize. I'm sorry. But it is important. Four Octopods are up at this point. Big deciding factor is going to be housing. Housing class is being built. Monkuki does have that set up. He's getting a much more powerful economy by the minute. And Electro is not. Electro's economy has been at four, at three LCRPs and one QPRP this entire game. There has been nothing changing in that regard. All his money has been sunk into Octopods, of which he has four and that's enough of a force to deal with this, probably even with Depot Heal taken into consideration. That being said, Monkuki, at his point of view, getting more economy. He has Halcyon class at the 648 mark. He could very easily start getting some Zion Halcyons if he wanted to. He has the money for it. He can easily just start piloting. Actually, it looks like a... Sh oh, okay, the Shin Halcyon... Sorry, Teth Halcyon and Shin Halcyon are actually possibilities, but... Zion Halcyon would be the one to go for to deal with the Octopods. While Electro, on the other hand... Continuing to pump Octopods out, but not going for an attack. He might be waiting until he gets 5 or 6. Like I said, at this point with 4 Octopods, he'd win. At the Implevel Pass Edge, if Depot Heal was not taken into account, he would win outright. Monkuki has no Gate Tech. Monkuki has no 
ability to micro and depot heal, even one Zion Pulsar wouldn't have enough by the time it, it would heal up and then the depot would just get destroyed while it's healing up. Now, Electro on the other hand, he appears to be setting up. He is clearly planning something. He's got a lot of stuff set up. He has this Octopod set up as the main force to attack with. I mean, unless something's gone squirrely in the replay and Electro is actually going for Chronoporting, I don't think so. Everything looks sensible. It's just that Electro is definitely building up a, a force, and Monkey well aware of Electro's attack force now, getting a Zion Halcyon, that is going to be tough to deal with. I should point out, Zion Halcyon has the most health of any mobile unit in the game, barring the Carrier and Inceptor. Actually, no, just the Inceptor and Gargantuan. The Carrier actually has less health than it. And there we go, Electro is moving out for an attack, possibly a bit too far away from the Impelable Fast Edge, but it's still a very imposing attack. This Zion Halcyon is going to be the deciding factor, and with Depot Heal, it's probably going to be able to take them all out. We'll see, though. It... Electro really should have tried to attack close to the Impelable Fast Edge, and Monkey is jumping a bit further back. His Zion Halcyon is slightly outside of Depot Heal range, but it is getting Skip Teleport, so we can easily get back into it. But the main thing about Depot Heal is that if... Okay, two Zion Halcyons, monkey has got this game. I was about to say, the main thing about Depot Heal is that it only really helps if the Depot is not being attacked itself. If the Depot is being attacked itself, it only lasts as long as the Depot does, which admittedly isn't a short amount of time, but against this sort of firepower, it's not trivial. You have to be careful about that. That being said, Electro is... I'm not sure what he's planning on doing. Like I said, he might have been trying to go for Chronoporting instead, but he clearly didn't have enough Q-Plasma for it, and Monkuki... At the 8.50 mark, he knows about the forces coming in. He knows what's going on. And he is... I'm a bit surprised Electro has not waited until the Impelable Fast Edge and just attacked from there. But it looks like that might be what he's planning on doing. That is exactly what he's planning on doing. He needs to jump away from this point. There we go! Although, Monkuki has picked up on this and is scouting out. He is making sure that he is able to micro what's going on. And this... Zion Halcyon will be the first to skip back and get Depot Heal. Now, Monkey is going to run out of Chrono Energy very shortly. In fact, he doesn't have, he has just enough Chrono Energy to heal up this Zion Halcyon. And not even able to do that. He is pausing to deal with that. He will throw them into the Depot. But the Chrono Energy concern is big. And actually, not able to do that. The command not received in time. This Zion Halcyon should be saveable, though. It, it will probably be salvaged. And there it goes, into the Depot. Zion Pulse are getting killed. Monkey has no Chrono Energy to deal with that. And the other Zion Halcyons, another Zion Halcyon being built, actually, from the Zion Veer that was destroyed. Sorry, Zion Veer that was taken out of its Zion Halcyon. So like I said, with Depot Hill, two Zion Halcyons just finish this off. The only hope might have been to micro around and target the Depot directly, but then, of course, that would have been a lot of firepower coming in at the, at the Octopods. And Electro is forced to retreat, having initiated his attack way too late in meta time terms. It really was a question. I mean, admittedly, he tried his best when it came to skipping away, but it is worth pointing out there is a unplayable past edge time wave, and also Monkuki was able to catch up with it. Now, the thing is that Monkuki did actually catch up with it. That was a big thing there. The fact that Monkuki caught up with it made a huge difference because it meant that Monkuki was actually able to micro around it, which is exactly what he's going to do right now when he skips back the Zion Halcyon into his base, which should be now. There we go. Because the thing is, if he hadn't found that, it would have been a little while before that next time wave had crossed the Unplayable Past Edge. Because there is a time wave at the Unplayable Past Edge, but the thing with that is, it's... You have to go there and then fast forward from there, and it's it's still possible to get out of a situation that's tight. But it's not trivial. However, Monkey had more than enough firepower to begin with, and this is basically where that leads. Zion Halcyon is tearing apart Electro's base. And then GG, quite shortly. And Monkuki getting Gate Tech. Electro never had the Q-Plasma to actually get it. I think he might have been planning to, but he never had the Q-Plasma to follow through on that. Which means that this is game, and this is the match as well. So Electro will be fighting Sharadan after this, and Monkuki will be fighting God, which I'm sure is absolutely terrifying. But we'll see. Maybe Monkey can pull something out. I mean, we were seeing Caesar versus Grekim. I imagine that God's Grekim versus Vekir is powerful as well, but 
We'll see. And Electro throws in the towel. That is the GG. That is game and match on game two between Electro and Monkuki. So once... There we go. That is done. So Electro, Monkuki, two games, and Monkuki takes the win. So he will be fighting against God in round three, and Electro will be fighting against Sharadan in the loser's bracket round one. So... Stay tuned, I will be coming in with Cyberneck Pony vs. Shalka shortly.